three, two, one. Hey, how are you guys? Today, we are doing anniversary marriage Q&A. Q&A. Our sixth installment. You obviously know who I am because this is my channel, but if you don't know who I am, my name is Vicky. This is my husband, Cameron. Um, We've been married for six years, as of February 14th. Right, it'll be six years of February 14th. Yes, we have questions that you guys asked on Instagram. Really quickly, before we even get into the questions, we're gonna do a little uh, little recap, just a quick recap. I'm gonna speed through this, are you ready? All right, we got married on February 14th, 2014. I was 22, he was 23. Three. We're both PKs, our parents are both pastors, and they're both friends. Before we met, and they introduced us. They told us to add each other on Facebook. We added each other on Facebook. We were friends for one year, dated for three years, long distance. It was hard, but we made it through. And we were engaged for one year, got married in 2014. We're engaged less than a year. And we engaged nine months. I'm from Dallas. He's from Chicago. I moved to da Chicago from Dallas immediately after we got married. The rest is history. We have a whole vlog channel if you want to watch every single moment that we have that's been exciting right because we got a couple people that asked where y'all y'all been vlogging yeah we've been the vlogging vlog channel will be years. linked up here so somewhere go ahead and check that out we have six years of vlogs that you guys can watch <laughs> just in case you want to get caught up it's it'll, pick, it'll take you a long periodically time but you'll be all right um a long what periodically time do we want kids yes we want kids haven't had them yet but we're praying we have a dog named Gigi. got her in 2016 she's awesome you want to say hi to the people we don't have time how did i know he was the one I, I don't know, I just knew. Cause when you love someone. So now we're gonna move into the deep things. <laughs> First off, we're gonna start off with the year in review. Really that's what most people wanna know, how our 2016, 2016, whoa! Most people wanna know how our 2019 went, how we ended off the decade, you know, how we're gonna start this new decade, what our goals are and everything like that. So we're gonna answer those questions first. The first question is, if you could use one word to describe year six, what would your one word be? Worth it. That's not one word. Worth. <laughs> <laughs> Please elaborate. For me, it was a challenging year. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. I broke my arm January 20th, 2019. That right day that's ingrained in your brain, huh? Yeah, because I know it was the third Sunday. I had preached that morning at church. A basketball league game that night. It was the end of the game. I got undercut, fell, tried to catch my fall, broke my elbow, came home. It was a playoff game. I remember because it was the Chiefs against the Patriots. I remember that day like it was yesterday. <laughs> like that's the first time like I had a major, major injury that like took me out for a long period of time. I was on pain meds and I didn't like the pain meds. And I had to really rely on my wife to help me out in a lot of ways. And I had to help put a shirt on and stuff. It was, yeah, it was I mean, kind it, of was, depressing. It, was, it was crazy. Dealing with all types of things mentally in my mind and you know being unsatisfied in certain areas of my life not for anything that she did but my grandmother passing the week before Christmas and my mom you know having to be in a hospital with her for six months and she's in a much better place she's not battling leukemia anymore her body's not hurting anymore she's in heaven she rejoicing she kicking it with Jesus you know making all the mac and cheese I mean cheese. killing I mean she probably they eating good I go over and she'd be like you hungry what you got this was a tough year and uh but we made it our relationship i feel like our relationship we get stronger every year so everything that i went through last year personally that was challenging for me i think it was still worth it oh so, that's so sweet yeah it was the worst year of my life but like god was still so good in the midst of like everything that i that i went through so come on with if your i word. had a word to describe 2019 i would say my word for the year was resilience can i still use that word why not resilience uh but i talked about this in my other video where i talked about my goals and stuff how the year was kind of like confusing because just everything was just weird and it felt weird it, you could tell we were in like a transitional period because everything was going wrong a lot of the resilience that i had to have was for cam because i had to like take care of him last year because the year before that i was struggling like emotionally and physically and stuff so. and i needed him Gigi, can you not be disrespectful right now last year he needed me more every year i feel like we go through more things but it makes us more close because normally stuff when bad stuff happens people kind of distance themselves from each other but like we like keep getting closer who else was gonna be there for him i had to be there for him like who's going to uh put his shirt on for him when his arm is messed up <laughs> i had to 
clean your head off. You were sick and you hit your head. I had to get some gloves. I had a big gash. And clean the, the blood head. off his head. And then I had to go to the store, get some Vicks. That's when I had blonde so he hair could too, breathe. so you could see the blood. Right after I dyed his hair blonde, I was so upset. It's just a lot. And then when grandma, the whole thing with grandma, and you was like seeing you at the hospital with her and you were just not feeling your best. And I was trying to, you know, be emotionally supportive for him. And I think that's the first time I've ever seen you cry. I mean, that's it's a lot. A lot happened. Man. Growing up, I never had experiences where people were like open and vulnerable with me like that. Nobody ever showed that side of themselves to me. So this is my first time experiencing how to be a shoulder. The whole year I was like trying to be supportive and emotionally supportive, you know, and I've never had to do that. So I was just like, wow, this is a lot. Am I doing okay? Did I do okay? Yeah, you did great. Okay, yeah. good. I'm glad. Cause I was really like, oh man, I don't know what to do right now. Like, what do you say? Right. Because nothing you, what do you say, say really, really, really helps. What do you do? You I know? don't know. So yeah. I just sit there and look. Yeah. Just being there, like well, calls I was present. and texts. I mean, that's nice, but when you show up, like your presence, like that's what matters. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, listen, honey, I was there shooting in the gym. What did you learn about each other in year six? Every year we learn that at the end of the day, it's really like it's just, just us. us. I mean, of course we have our family and stuff like that, but at the nah, end of the day, it's like, just us. when man. I leave from wherever, when I leave from church, when I leave from the gym, when I leave from work, when I leave from Best Buy, when I leave from the golf course, when I leave from playing basketball, it's just us. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what, it's just us. We keep growing closer through all the adversity and all the stuff that we go through, even the stuff that you guys won't know about or won't hear about. It's just us. So yeah. I'm, about to, I'm about to get something to drink. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, I learned, I learned, you got to put your finger up. <laughs> I just learned him in a different way. Like... I think that's learning. Like when you when you see somebody in a vulnerable position, uh, you learn a lot about them because you learn their honest and true reactions. That's why it's good for y'all to know people before you just start, you know, hopping up in a space. You know what I'm saying? You trying to get to know people, get to know the real them, not just the highlight them. You know what I'm saying? Not just the cute them. You gotta know what they like when they upset and when they sad and when they you know, going through it. So I learned a lot about Cam from that experience. So as you get older, things happen. Life happens and you just gotta deal with it. Biggest accomplishment in year six. I was so proud of myself because I actually like went to the gym semi-consistently. And you had some pretty noticeable gains. I had some pretty noticeable gains and I was active. Like from January until December, I was going to the, well, November, December was kind of a struggle. I was going to the gym, okay? I was working out at somebody gym. I went to three different ones, but hey, I made it. For me, because like I, I look at things like this, teaching and preaching and ministry, like in the ministry aspect, like I grew. You did. Exponentially from the previous year. That's one of the things that like I'm very mindful of because like I don't want to be stagnant and just stay at that same level. So yeah, uh, I'll say that together. We purchased a new vehicle. Oh, we did. I forgot. Dang, I forgot about the Tesla that quick. Oh, that is a big... Com okay, that's another one of my accomplishments. Yep, that's a big deal. Well, it was a big deal for me because it was my first time purchasing a vehicle. We did this in her name. Right. So he, he got me the Jeep and I got him the Tesla. Everything you is know, we. Everything is we. Everything is we. Okay, I was going to say an accomplishment that I was proud of for Cam. You were really upset about your arm and stuff and you, you went to your little therapy and he was like, the first time you did a push-up, he was so happy. I was like, oh, look at you. I was so proud of you. I was like, wow, you got your strength back. I was really proud of him in that moment. Yeah. It still pops a little. Like, when it's I, still a little when shaky, I'm lifting but weights, you're back. Like yeah, Every time I see pops. you like do a pull-up or something, I'd be like, wow. La this time last year, you was really hurt. You know what I mean. Where is Barry Allen when you need him to <laughs> Go back in time? Yes. What's your best or funniest memory from year six? A lot of things are funny. I think we laugh about everything, so it's really hard. Like, that's every day. <laughs> it's really hard to to think of the funniest. I mean, we did go to Singapore last year. That was like super cool. Like, what's, like what when you think about twenty nineteen and a good memory, the first thing that pops to your head? Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. My favorite moment, one of my favorite moments is when I dyed Cam's hair blonde because it had me feeling all kinds of ways. You let me do that. I was really shocked that you let me do that. 
Yeah, me too. Uh, I dislike this question a lot, but everybody wants to know, do you plan to leave Chicago? Where would you want to live if you left Chicago? Is Chicago your forever home or do you want to leave? Would you want to live in a different country? Okay, Where would you number want to one, move? I would love, I've, I've lived in an, another place before. I went to college uh, in Orlando. Me, so. I, I, I had a blast. I, I loved it there. The line of work slash business slash ministry that I'm in, I know that I'm supposed to be here. If it wasn't for ministry, I would not live here at all. Just, Where would you want to live? Where do you want to go? Make that clear. Either Arizona or Texas. Preferably Texas because we could be in a mansion right now. Like plenty space, now. plenty room. No. All that. No state tax. You Illinois kidding? robs you. All of your coins. Okay? But, you know, I say it And like it's this. cold and it snows. It's literally nothing but the grace of God that I live here. <laughs> like, and, and I mean that in a literal sense. I'm here because I know we that I'm to supposed be. to be here. We're supposed to be here. If I was like the rest of y'all and I didn't care about, you know, where God wanted me to be and assignments and all that, yeah, I'll, I'll move where I'm, wherever I want. Assignments have locations. They do. I don't think about those things because I know I don't have that option. Yeah, people, so people I don't all even, the time. I don't yeah, Cam, you know, you know you need to go in and just move. Come on down here. Yeah, man, you know what you need. No, like I, we got know. stuff to do. Like, <laughs> like I don't have time to be thinking about where I want to go. Doing that. I have no desire to go anywhere right now because I know this this is where we need to be. So, what are your goals for the new year and new decade? Three goals. Number one is to continue to grow in my expository preaching and ministry. Number two, I want to put out music professionally done, executed professionally, <laughs> with the proper quality. I do want to put out a single this year. And then number three, actually four, uh, <laughs> get out of this town home, get the house that we want. In the neighborhood that I want, with the food that I want around there, the grocery stores and the malls and everything. This one over here. I'm bougie and I want what I want. I refuse to settle. I'm like, man, we going to have to hit the lottery. We not. <laughs> the type we just, of crib you try to get. So. I have faith. And then number four, obviously, I'm about to be 30 this year, so I definitely want to have children soon so keep us in your prayers my goals are pretty much just that i don't have any really big goals outside of that obviously i want to do things with my brand and stuff that i'm not going to say because i don't like telling my business before it happens i'm secretive so i don't like talking about stuff until it's actually come to fruition so it's just because i don't want people to keep asking me if it doesn't happen how are you preparing for your 30s um just really being very reflective. That's, I mean, I can't really do anything else. <laughs> right. But I've just really Taking just been, vitamins. I've just been reflecting. Like when you approach like milestone years, it definitely makes you like look at your entire Looking life. Out. I'm like, dang, I'm looking at my life compared to my father's life when we're the same age. Obviously, I'm not going to say much more advanced, but I'm more advanced than he was at that particular age. My father had me when he was 30. All that that stuff starts playing in your mind. It's like, okay, like, okay, God, like, <laughs> you can stop playing now. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not about to be 30, so I don't, I'm not going to answer that question. Name an accomplishment you hope the other achieves. One of the big things, and this is what I've been feeling for like the last five, six oh. years. I wanted, I wanted her to have a manager that like legit understood her, liked her, and knew what they was doing. Because all her previous managers, God bless you, but you were trash. You did not look out for her in the way that her manager now does. And she only been working with her for 27 and a half days. <laughs> I mean, stuff has just turned around like instantaneously. And the way her energy level and effort is in different campaigns and stuff now it's like it makes a difference who's on your team i could preach on that because i was literally reading in my bible plan today about relationships it's about who's connected to you in mm. your life that help you get to the places where you go jesus had 12 he knew everything about the 12 and he knew that there was going to be one that was going to betray him and he knew that there was going to be several that was going to stick closer to him than nothing else when you understand the people that are around you, the relationships that you have, that will help you in your life so quickly. I mean, having positive relationships in your life truly, 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 truly matter. That's one of the things but that... that's not a goal, though. 
use it. It said accomplishment was one thing you want them to accomplish. Like that's one thing that I've been wanting you to accomplish. Now you got somebody in your corner that's that know the ins and outs, the you know, the income. <laughs> She in her bag. bag she in bag. her bag, Celine. I hope that Cam really does come out with some music because number one, I mean, no shade to the music industry. There are not many gospel artists that I personally like, like and listen to. There's a void in that area that he could fill. So I want to see him thrive in his creative aspects. Um, not just music, but just like in general, I've been trying to push Cam to do more creative stuff because he's been cooped up in this corporate job. And so I really wanna see him exit corporate America uh, just cause I wanna see him like do everything that he wants to do and be his whole creative self. I told him, I was like, babe, you could just go work at Apple and I would be so, that would make me so happy cause I know he's happy doing that. I just and wanna see that him. Would, that would give me time to work on all my other stuff. Right, and I want him to work on his other stuff. I want him to be more creative. I do what I actually enjoy. And so like, I obviously want people around me to have that same liberty. Before getting married, did you have a vision for your marriage, a mission or a vision for your marriage? And are you still following that today? I was one of Alexa's friends that asked that question. Are you still following that today? So I'm not gonna say that I didn't, but I'm not gonna say that I like wrote it down like, like a church vision and mission statement. One of my favorite scriptures is in Matthew 15, I believe. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. That's what I want our marriage to embody. That's why we started Life of the Logans. Not that it, not so we could be a stumbling block, you know, because obviously we're not perfect people. We're both PKs. You understand the pressure that comes with that. But we wanted to show that you could be young, you could be saved, you could be married and you can have fun. You can enjoy life. You can have other friendships, other relationships and not go to the club and not be drunk and not smoke and do drugs and you know what i'm saying like that's what i wanted to show and that's what we've continued to do we've been consistent in who we are for six years and i pray that we continue to be even more consistent and that we continue to grow in our relationship with christ like we both have you know that's another thing like she just blossomed and just you know blew up and i'm like I you know what I'm saying? She's singing in the choir now and she's serving in ministry oh, yeah. with me even more. And like other people are blessed by that and our union. So I my my vision for our marriage is, Get is out. I was about to burp. Um, <laughs> no, stop sorry. holding that in. That frustrates me because I want to burp for you. As far as like the vision and the mission part. Yeah, it, it's exactly what we wanted. Obviously, there's some other things that, you know, I wish we could do or have or the Bible also says many are the plans and the plans are <laughs> many are the plans. So I feel like I get on here and preach every year. You can't help it. You are a preacher. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I don't even roll my eyes anymore. I'm, not I'm sorry just at like all. he's gonna preach. I just know it. How are how we handle finances now? What has changed since we started our business? Who's better at saving, who spends more, who how do you split bills, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so before when we answered the finances question, we kind of just touched on like joint accounts and do we have joint accounts? Yes, we do. Obviously, everything is we, so we share everything. Um, I don't hide any money from him. He doesn't hide any money from me. But I think now we've just been more, especially last year because we did start our business, we've right. been very much more intentional about um, like reorganizing everything, making sure we know which money goes into what account and blah, blah, blah. It's not necessarily like you pay for this, I pay for that. You know what I mean? Like it's not like we split it down the middle. Like when we go on a date, you pay, you pay today and I'll pay next time. We don't really do it like that because we have a business. Like it's three different entities instead of, Two. So instead of it just being me and him, we, it's me and him and the business. So now like we have to be very intentional about our money together. So we do team. It's like a teamwork building exercise. It's really like hard to explain because of the business now. So it's, it's not like easy. Like we just have one account and then we put money in there and we just pay. Now we have somebody else on the outside who's helping us with that. Um, a professional. A professional who's helping us with finances and stuff like that because it's a lot to do all of that on your own. If you own a business, you know what I'm talking about. I think what most people wanna know is do we follow traditional gender roles basically? Like do you pay all the bills and not just sit back and kick it? Um, it's different for every relationship, uh, but for you us, it's very what complicated. Work, what works <laughs> for you? But you gotta do what works for you. And I don't, I don't look at it as like he has to do certain things and I have to do certain things. He has to pay for certain things and I, no, we, we, pitch in together like i mean like we, if there's we dishes split. in the sink like 
I'm not going to, woman, get down here and wash them. <laughs> like, nobody has this a... This is not 1920. We don't okay? force each other into roles. You know, sometimes we Everything flip is it, we. You know, like, we, we, we work it out. Whatever we feel like doing at the moment. There's no, like, real, like, rules or roles. Because I've tried... I don't even follow my own rules. So, I mean... Oh, I'm glad you... I'm so glad. I don't. I have a I'm whole so schedule. You know. and it was... We had something she taped on the door. I tried. I came home one day to do to-do list before you leave. <laughs> I'm reading this stuff and I'm like, you don't even know. <laughs> it was for both of us, okay? It's accountability. As far as finances go, um, everything is we. I constantly say that because I want y'all to understand that marriage is teamwork and it's not just one person handles all this stuff. And if that works for you, that's fine. But I mean, we've just learned we have to be really open and honest and work together because neither one of us really know what we're doing at the time. So we, <laughs> I mean, it's like we're kind of like winging it and figuring it out. Every year our finances change and we reorganize and we redo things. So literally, I mean, so. it's never the same. We have a, a consistent group of married friends that we communicate with. They have team meetings, meetings. the husband and wife, like they have a team meeting. They pick a day and they sit down and they say, okay, this is what, this what we got going on. I'm so you know, excited about these meetings. We, we're starting that. I'm I'm one of those people that I don't like to waste words. So, like, if like if it's something that we need to talk about, okay. But, like, nine <laughs> you times out of ten. you can send it in an email, send it in an email. Just, just text me. Like, He's a know, texter. I'm I've not, learned. He's a texter. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, so. My strength is spreadsheets. I, I work. Mean, I work in spreadsheets all day. I, he don't want to look at no spreadsheet. So. I, that's why I'm like, let's let me handle. She sent me something the other day. I was like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> is it better to wait until both parties are financially where they need to be to get married, or get married first and grow together as a couple? We know some people that literally said this exact thing. Like he wanted to make sure, you know, what I'm saying. Right, that's what I'm saying. You know, she had graduated. You know, he was still in school. He was trying to make sure he had a financially secure job i'm just going to talk about me because i know me when you and i were dating we had passed the two-year mark and then you know you know what you gonna do i'm like um i did i wasn't full-time i was working part-time like i can't support no wife right now like now when i get a full-time job and i know i'm secure and if something happens like i'm okay like that's a different story. I Good got a full time job. I bought a ring and we got engaged. And then nine months later, we got married. Like there was like a number that I had in my head, but it was like, okay, I want to live in a particular area. There were certain situations, predicaments I would never put my wife in just because I wanted to hurry up and get married. Like or people were pressuring me to get married. At the same time, we weren't engaged for like ten years because I'm trying to get financially stable. That's true. Because you know what I'm saying? And I see too many, too much of that. A man knows when he wants you. When I know what I want, I know what I want. Mm -hmm. And I want that. Mm -hmm. And I go get that. And I bring that back with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how men are wired. Things don't have to be perfect. But, you know, obviously you do want to have a common understanding of what your goals are. I mean, I've seen it work in either case. Um, but as far as like millennials and like people our age getting married goes... Most of us want to have our stuff together before we get married, just because we've seen people struggle before us, and we well, we don't want that. Um, but obviously, you got to make that decision for yourself. So, which is better for newlyweds, renting or buying? This is just a tip. I don't know how it works wherever you guys are. If you got Do the money, if you, if you got the money and you want to buy a home off off the rip, go for it. Like ownership is amazing. It is ownership is incredible. It's a lot of work. Go but... for it. If you if you ain't never did this before, and you're not you know, literate and home ownership versus renting and all that stuff. Rent, rent a town home. You get more bang for your buck as opposed to living in an apartment. Cause renting is not really a risk. You can always change your mind, but buying. How do you feel about the Tesla? Does, do you still like it? Does Vicky still like her Jeep? I do still like my Jeep, but here's the thing. Cam loves driving his Tesla so much that I, it's just so much easier for us to hop in the Tesla. I personally get very frustrated with having a Tesla because that's because we don't have we don't have a, a home charger. Home we charger. don't have a fast charger for the house. They were trying to charge me an arm and a leg to install a faster charger, a fourteen fifty connector in the garage. It's a little inconvenient. Our electricity box is. I know he's gonna explain all this over here. And they're gonna have to go up through the ceiling all the way down to the garage, which is over there, and then put some PVC piping and electrical wires down through there, and then install the connector right there, and then based on the placement, I was like fourteen hundred dollars. I know people that got their connectors installed for two hundred dollars. Like that's that's no. <laughs> I only it's inconvenient. I only feel bad about having to charge when other people are waiting on you. She is like, 
Definitely. Well, because if we're on our way somewhere this and we so have, we're, we don't have all the time in the world to get where we need to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to have to stop. But I will say the car is cool. I do still like it. That's that on that. Are we still getting a new house? Yes. We're just taking our time because we want to have the money and the funds to get what we want. How has Cam handled your health journey and gaining weight? And how does he support you? We go to the gym together. Yeah, I'm her trainer. He's my trainer. She don't like me all the time. But I don't. She don't even be listening. She be having her headphones in. I have on one headphone so I can make sure that when she's communicating with me, I can hear her. She got her music on full blast. I'm going to stop doing I'd that. I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna stop doing 10 that. reps. And she'd be like, huh? <laughs> Dancing. 10 reps. Like, let's go. She's like, what? I'd be like, man, turn your music down so you can hear me. Like, got me out here looking stupid. But he's very happy with the results. Very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's enhanced our marriage in many ways. Has your attraction to each other grown or changed over time? Obviously, it's grown. It's grown because we both was looking at pictures of when we first started talking. Ooh. And my style was... He swore bell bottom dress. <laughs> Get out of here. When we were dating, I did not like the way Cam dressed at all. I, I literally... And I hated the way I she dressed. I could not stand the way he dressed. We were both a mess, but we, we've come around. We yeah, she out. she find us all get out now. She find us wrong here. <laughs> no, Cam is like very attractive now. Like, oh my gosh. See, and that you know what I'm saying? That's all that's all the brother <laughs> needs. She think I'm fine. Boy, you know what I'm saying? Especially makes, blonde Cam. It make like, me wanna go harder in the gym. You dig what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say that one because that's that's a little too much, but uh sorry <laughs> this is personal, but is sex ever an issue? Never. Ever. And then I wanted to answer one of these. What do you do what if do you, one yeah. is in the mood and, and the, the other, other isn't? isn't? I subject my body. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it back. Really, I would get upset if he rejected me. So I feel like I can't do the same thing to him. <laughs> Number one, because men are physical and they need sex. Like, they just do. Like, you can't deprive them of that. I'm, I just, I just push through. Sometimes I'll be tricking her, too, because I'll be acting like a big baby. <laughs> he does. And it's cute. I'll just be like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Come on. <laughs> if you're not in the mood or if you don't feel like if you're tired or whatever just lay there who said you gotta do all the work i just feel like you just make things happen the way you gotta make it happen you know what i'm saying you just gotta do what you gotta do i don't want to be that i've never wanted to be that couple where it's like mm -mm, he didn't do right so i'm not giving him none like that's evil witchcraft punishment none of that eye for an eye when we get into bed it's fair game let's go have you experienced any changes since cam has become a, oh, that's for me since cam has become a pastor and been preaching more so i'll just answer all these in one because somebody asked what role do I play? And then have I experienced changes? I don't preach myself, but you know, I do have to be there when he's like praying for people and stuff. And you know, I have to welcome the visitors and things like that. It's, a, it's been uncomfortable for me because it always feels like people are watching me and watching what I'm gonna do. So it, 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 it has forced me to, number one, I have to have a strong relationship with God because I have to know how to pray. And number two, it's forced me to be more like open, which is one of the reasons why I joined the choir. I don't like being on stage, but I figured if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it in ways that'll make me feel more comfortable. I've just had to learn how to be more um, personable, which I have been doing. I feel like I've prepared. I've been prepared a little bit because the past like five years, I've been like learning how to be more compassionate. I gotta hug people when they're crying and things like that. It's it's awkward, but uh, I do it because I know people need that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's something that you can't do without them? Different shows, like I can't watch. She can't watch it like without me. I can't watch it without her. <laughs> it, it's a thing. It's like, a thing. She's like, yeah, I watch it, and I'll be at work, and I'll text her like, you ain't no good. <laughs> sometimes the betrayal. It takes us, sometimes it takes us too long to watch stuff together, so then I get frustrated, and I need to know what happened next, and I'm at home all by myself, and I'm just like, <clears throat> I'm about to watch it. Um, But now I've tried to be more considerate. I didn't watch any of you without you. We watched I mean, it we pretty binged, quick, though. We binged it in two days. We did. So. I definitely left you on Star, though. I'm sorry. It was getting good. I had to keep going. And he would keep falling asleep. And I'm just like, you can't fall asleep because I'm still watching. He does get upset when I try new restaurants and I don't tell him about it. He's like, well, you went there with your friends. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. So if I know I'm not going to eat when I get home and I know I'm going to eat something on my way home, I'll call her because I'm considered. That's just, I was raised like that. Okay. I'll call her and say, hey, babe, I'm about to stop at such and such. Did you want anything? No, I don't want that. Well, what do you want? I don't know. You know, we have that, but I still call. <laughs> This one. What? She'll be somewhere, come home. Oh my God, I went to Brown's Butter Bacon Chicken Sandwich. <laughs> and 
and they brown butter chicken sandwiches are so good. And they're like, did you bring me one? She's been doing better lately. I have, and I'll take you, and I'll be like, I went here with so-and-so, and it's really good, you should get this, and we have a good old time. Does Cam get annoyed that Vicky steals his clothes? Yes. Does Vicky care? No. She creative. gets makeup on my stuff, and she swear it come out, but it don't. What's the most fun or creative date y'all have had? I don't know if this is considered a date, but our anniversary our trip, we went to Cabo, and then we did the ATVs. That was That fun. was so fun. You had a and lot And then like riding around the beach, like, that was cool. That was that was one of the coolest. We're definitely doing that on our next vacation. That was one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, I would say our vacations are always the most fun. I consider them dates. Very expensive dates, but they're dates nonetheless. If you wrote a book, what would it be about? It would be a rom-com. It would be Steve Carell, Office. Somebody, oh, somebody asked a question like that. If somebody could play you in a movie other than yourself, who would you want to play you? Question for you guys. Sound off in the comments. Who would you think could play me that's an actor now? I'm trying to think, and I don't know. I don't know either. Somebody asked me, we're going into year seven, and everybody says that the seven-year itch is like a thing. What does that mean? I looked it up, and the seven-year itch is when, like, you start getting irritated with each other, and, like, things, like, start going wrong, and, like, your marriage is kind of, it's like the testing year. Are you nervous about the seven-year itch or whatever? I don't be reading into stuff like that. I Me neither. I mean, every year is difficult. So <laughs> if it's any worse than new this, levels, I feel new like devils. we prepare, okay. honey. We haven't been through the fire okay. and the storm, but we going to make it out. So tell the challenges to get in line, ready for we it. We may be young in our Built marriage and it. things like that. Won't but I don't now. think I'll ever get irritated with Cam. I don't get tired of him. Because people do ask this, and they've asked it a lot. Why don't we argue? I'm not a good arguer because I don't know how to express my feelings in the moment. I never see my mom argue with anyone. I've never seen her cuss anyone out. I've never seen my mom get mad and yell at anybody but me and my brothers. But as far as like adults, other adults, I've never seen her out of character ever. So I don't know how to do that. I just never learned how. But I'm also not a temperamental person. I don't get temperamental. And I just feel like, look at this face. Can you be mad at this face? The few times I have been mad at Cam, I literally did not know what to do. I did not know how to yell. I didn't know how to scream. I didn't know how to argue. Like obviously we get in disagreements. Everybody has things that irritates them and stuff, but I just be like, in a calm voice, I'd be like, babe, you know, uh, this is how I feel about such and such. You know but it's how never, I feel. But I never like, I'm not gonna yell at him. What about me? Cause I hate tension. <laughs> What about me? I hate tension, so I'm not gonna create tension yeah, like, in my own house. Like, I just feel like that's a waste of energy. Like, in relationship, I don't do games. I don't do games either. I don't do games. Arguments, like, that's a game. I don't like, know how to play them, but. I'm very self aware. Like, I know when I did something wrong. So I'm not going, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I. Like, I'm He's not gonna defensive. keep. He's not defensive. You know what? You're right. And I'm gonna do better. Sometimes I just take my clothes off and I put them in one particular area where she doesn't necessarily like that. And she may say something to me for three weeks. And then, you know, in the sixth week, if she <laughs> if she get bucked, like I can't get mad because she's been saying and something I never for get six bucked. weeks. I just let it. I just let it because one day you're going to fix it. I and mean, then she'll say it's something. Not the end and, of the world. I, and I'm looking. I'm like, that don't, yeah, that don't make no sense. And then I cleaned it up like I did today. I just picked everything up. I know I'm dusty. I be so, doing dusty stuff all the time. So I know, can't get mad. You're self-aware. When you know you're in the wrong, you wrong. Like, I'm not going to keep going back. No, no, but you, but you. Like, even if even if we're mad about something at each other, like, even if we're irritated, I end up laughing we both halfway end up laughing. through the argument anyway. We both end up laughing. I'm so goofy. So it's, like, not a, it's not an art. Like, it's never an argument. I just, I don't, I don't see how that solves anything. I don't know how to, cause I wouldn't want to like hurt him. Like, I just feel like, yeah, I, I just like you too much. Like, I don't raise my voice. Cause at the end of the day, I'm going to want some and I don't want you to be mad at me. <laughs> I already don't have a lot of people that I can talk to about stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a lot of people that, that I'm like super, super close to like that. The person that I cling to and I need somebody to support me, why would I put tension in that area to make it harder for him to connect with me because then I'm isolating myself because we have that understanding that we established while we were dating we did don't no. you argue with me because I ain't don't raise argue. your voice at me don't call me on my name don't disrespect me 
because I'm not going to do that to you. If you're going to do that to me, let me know now. Act up now so, so I, can I can cut leave. you off. Like, <laughs> and that's yeah. on period. I can go into a whole nother tangent about that. But yeah, I love her. Um, I love her more each and every year. She's Dang. literally the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I love being married to her. I love our friendship. I love our relationship. And people be like, man, Kim, like, you really love your wife. I can tell you genuinely because I genuinely do. Yo, like, we are friends first. Like, you just, I don't like, even understand how important that is. The, the homie. homie. Like, we kick it. Like, we just two peas in a pie. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'll on be leaving some work. I'll be stuff. like, yo, what's up? What you on? What you on, bro? You like, where we going? What we like, doing? Uh, yeah. Scoop me. Bet. People sometimes. I'm going to protect this house over any other relationship I have, bro. And that's on me. That's right. And I feel like people, because I feel like people sometimes they get into relationships and they segment their personality for certain people. You know what I'm saying? Like John Legend said, I give but, you all. But like there's stuff that I, there's not anything oh, that I like hide from him. There's not a part of me that I don't share with him. Somebody asked me if there's things that I'm still embarrassed about around you and stuff. I'm like, no, like. I wish. He wishes. I wish she was embarrassed him, I was, to burp around me. And I mean, he's at this point, he's seen all of me. Yeah. All the intricacies. I wish she closed doors when she was doing number two. I wish. <laughs> But there's just some things You that, need to know. You know? What's one thing that you would... One tip that you could leave with our viewers? I think, number one, the important thing to remember in your marriage and just as an individual is always continue to be building your relationship with God and always continue to self-reflect. Um, because if you know yourself and you know how to take care of yourself and you know how to pray... You good. People always ask me what's the hardest part of marriage. That's the hard part. Learning it. how to do all of that is the hard part. I love it. Figuring out how to maintain as a whole self individual outside of him because I still have to be a whole human being outside of him. Like I can't just live my life thinking about Cam. I gotta think about me too. If you're single, that's what you should be focusing on. Fix yourself. You're gonna keep doing that for the rest of your life. <laughs> Everything changes. Things just keep changing. I learn new things about myself every single day. So I gotta keep up. And that's, I can't love him if I don't love myself. So I'm winging that's it. Real. So on my third day out here, I don't know. That's real. Really get to know why you are the way you are. Yes. What makes you tick. Yep. You know, handling pressure. You're gonna handle pressure in every sphere of your life. I need to understand me and I need God to help me understand me because sometimes it's going to be difficult for you to listen to your wife tell you about you. So you got to have God tell you about you so he can really jack you up and you be like, you know what, babe, you're right. When that's in order, that, that vertical relationship's in order, all of your other relationships will be in order as well. So we love you. God bless you. We hope these questions helped you, and we'll be back soon. 11 months. We'll see y'all. Peace! We're going on vacation. Woo! We out.